Hashtag the Women's Film Festival, yeah. Hi, friends. <laughs> Welcome back. If you're just coming here for this, you're at the juggling concert. No, I'm just playing. You're at the second annual Women's Festival, and I am so happy to be here so that you can be a part of this absolute panel. Shout out to Philly Cam, who is live streaming this at this moment, and all our sponsors and partners. We appreciate you, and you being here, we appreciate. So I'm going to do some really quick um, bio reads, and if, you know, when I'm at you, if you want to smile at me or, you know, thumbs up or put your head down bashfully and pretend like, is this me? I take all these things. You most certainly can do that. Um, so you are here at the How Can, first of all, I want to get a shout out to the Philadelphia, because that stands for something, and I know what it stands for, because I said it like 16 times today, but I'm, you know, but, mm-hmm, that's right, it's the, I knew that, but see, I second guessed myself, see, yep, not anymore, because I'm, a, uh, this is the Philadelphia Women in Film and Television, for Philadelphia, right, our city, we're in the center of it. Ah, oh, it's delicious. Um, it's a panel for that, so that's what you're here for. And this is how can we make female media makers in Philly more visible to the people who hire. So you're joining us now and um, for this conversation and brainstorming session. So let me introduce the panelists we have here. It's like flavors of top restaurants. First, we have David Dunn. What's up, David? David is the executive producer, director, and co-founder of All Ages Productions. David Dunn is one of the co-founders of All Ages Productions. As a director, he has worked for clients such as Sailor Jerry Rum, I love it, to sip it, Lily Pul Pulitzer, yep, yeah, mm-hmm, Lily, what'd you say? Lily Pulitzer. That's it. Hendrix Gin, Britta Mavea, Health Republic, Dockers, Dial for Men, TYR, Warby Backer, Chop, and many others. D did, I say, did I say that wrong? I, you, I, I tuned out. Okay. <laughs> I know, because that's I what you saying, do. You're like, I is that all that? me? Uh-huh, yes, you did. David's personal works have shown in galleries and festivals nationally. He has completed two U.S. tours of his work, video work, and over six tours of his performance work. He is also a co-founder of the Copy Gallery, an alternative arts exhibition space, and the Small Chains Experimental Film Screening Series in Philadelphia. David was also a member of the renowned art collective Space 1026 and has shown work with them in venues such as the Institute. Is that, that's what he did. So I, I did that. Yeah. I like I'm it. doing that. I'm just surprised that, that it's that, on there. there. Yeah, yeah, well, hopefully y'all don't oh, say, oh, you know, oh, something oh, crazy. I'm, I'm doing it. Someone you know, I like it. Institute of <laughs> Contemporary Art in Philadelphia. Brain, you know what? Bra Some a gallery in New York called Bravin Lee. Yep, that's what that's he was there. And Labatt Gallery in Oakley, California. My man's all over, okay? He is qualified <laughs> to talk on this subject. Then we have Maureen Schultz. That's me. Hey, cuteness. Hello. How are you? I'm going to give you more of a distinguished tone. Okay. <laughs> she is the owner and executive producer for Sweet Spots Productions because she hits the sweet spot with what Hello. she does. Maureen Schultz is an experienced content creator, strategically positioned. I'm going to throw my... Mm. I was deep. At the crossroads of traditional TV, digital content, and social media. She is skillfully, she skillfully guides shows and cross-media projects from initial concept to top honors and awards. She's the go-to one. She makes it go down. If you're gonna have an art baby, she will make sure she guides it till it's born and successful. Thank you. That, you want to be my agent? That's you know I'm what? Happy. I would love to. Okay. Rewrite that bio. Weather no, the bio is delicious. It's, it hits my sweet spot when I read it. Whether producing a broadcast TV series, a YouTube channel, or a social media campaign. What happens? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Maureen engages audiences by merging compelling storytelling with new forms of video and technology. Combining her multifaceted production experience with digital strategy skills, Maureen creates effective and entertaining content for Sesame Workshop, Disney, Discovery, Health, Animal Planet, and other prestigious clients. Maureen's proven expertise across all phases of production enables her to bring together and lead the best talent for any project. Her work has garnered multiple awards among them, an Emmy, Telly, and a BDA Pro Max. Unlike some industry folks, okay, okay Maureen is proud to admit <laughs> she watches a lot of TV and constantly monitors digital and social media channels. It is not a job for her. It is a lifestyle <laughs> after all. Give it up for Maureen in the sweet spot. All right. We have Aaron Spence. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Aaron Spence is a Chief Business Development Officer for Boathouse Pictures. Thank you so much for being a community sponsor. We appreciate you. I appreciate you guys. Hey, Aaron currently serves as the Chief Business Development Officer for Boathouse Pictures. In 2012, Andre, mm-hmm, yep, Sabalat, yep, that's a word. These, yes. mm-hmm, <laughs> say it. Sabalat. That's it. Yeah. Yep, Mario. My alley. Uh-huh. And myself. Yep, begin Boathouse with $100 and a very big dream. Mm-hmm. Towinage, a community. To that, th you know what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Towinage, a community of storytellers in Philadelphia, helping bringing their visions to life. In his capacity as a co-founder and CBDO, Aaron speaks to Ford's partnerships with those interested in working with a unique creative film organizations, building a strong local business community, supervising the logistical needs for clients, and leading the strategic planning for the company at large. He is a proud graduate of both West Catholic Preparatory High School and LaSalle University. Aaron serves on the boards of several local community organizations, including the West Catholic Alumni Association Board of Governors, the Overbrook Park Church of Christ, and the Her Project, where he serves as chairman of the board. Give it up for Aaron. And last, but certainly not least, Jaquai? Jaqu Jackie. Jackie! You know what? I knew that. See? I knew she that. Is. You know what? Say your name for me, bae. Jackie Sadashige. You know what? I love it. It's just like velvet in my mouth, like caramel. She's a senior lecturer for the critical writing program at the University of Pennsylvania. You're the moderator. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hi. Hi. <laughs> she received her BA from Amherst College in English and Fine Arts and Master's in English from Indiana University and her Master and PhD in Classic Studies from the University of Pennsylvania. She is currently a senior lecturer for the Critical Writing Program at the University of Pennsylvania where she teaches writing seminars that address race and popular culture with an emphasis on film. Her scholarly interests focus on the ways in which popular culture reflects and refracts our views on race, gender, and species. In addition to teaching and writing about popular culture, she is also a staff member, member of the Philadelphia Asian American Film Festival, a local fitness professional, and an elephant ambassador for the Save Elephant Foundation in Thailand. You have a lovely panel of guests here. I hope you're inspired. Thank you guys for coming. That was a lovely surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hi everyone, I'm Suzanne Landau and I'm with Philadelphia Women in Film and Television. Um, we call ourselves PWIFT. Our mission is to support the creative efforts of female media makers in Philadelphia. Much of our work thus far has led us to understand that there's a real issue um, which we're beginning to address today. Women and women identified media makers, directors, producers, cinematographers, writers, editors, and all other crew positions are not getting many of the available jobs in the industry. Um, we want to know why. Is it because they don't have enough credits? Um, do they need to build their reels? Or is it just because those who hire can't find them? Um, today's discussion will focus on the latter of these issues. So we want you, the audience, the women media makers trying to make a living in Philly to find out where these busy production companies um, are looking when they're hiring above and below the line crew and for the producers on the panel to discover where all of you female media makers um, are hiding. With that information, PWIFT is gonna try and create new bridges 
um, and connections in our industry between those who hire and the women prepared to work. Um, you're hired is a statement we all want to hear in the near future. So let's get started. Jackie's going to take it away. We now have learned about our board, our um, <laughs> panel, which is awesome. So please start the discussion. Okay, terrific. Um, I think one, we've heard all about your lovely, amazing, impressive credentials. Um, so perhaps you could tell us about the process, um, hiring or how you get your clients. I mean, is it through connections? Is it cold calls? Um, and if you want to talk about something that you're currently working on and you know how you made those connections, how you found your staff, so on and so forth, please feel free, because um, I'm sure we'd also love to hear about things that you're currently working on. So take it away. <laughs> Aaron, you want to start? Uh, I guess I'll start. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go through kind of how we find people and talk about what we're currently working on. Um, so we, we find people to work with us and for us through any means necessary. Um, so a lot of what we do, we get people through word of mouth, uh, networking events, things like that. Occasionally, we found some people uh, through Craigslist. Um, so those kind of boards, because I don't think, uh, especially in the Philadelphia market, I don't think there's really one central place you can go to to find people who are going to fill certain positions. Um, finding clients, I will literally go anywhere. I've met with clients at diners. I've met with them on the top floor of the Comcast Tower. I'll go anywhere where the client is. Um, so those are the kind. Of, that's kind of how I curate individuals. Now, what we're currently working on, uh, we're wrapping a commercial um, that we're working on with uh, the Comcast Foundation for the Veteran Multi Services Center um, here in Philadelphia. Um, this is their second commercial with them, uh, and we've been fortunate to be granted both um, projects. Uh, we're also beginning. Uh, this week, so if my phone rings and I look a little anxious, it's because we're starting to shoot our first feature film um, entitled Roadwork Ahead, which we hope to have wrapped um, by early June. Um, and we've got a lot of other smaller events coming up, some event coverage, um, and we're also going to be working on a documentary for a local high school that's turning 100 years old soon. So all that stuff will be on our website. That's fantastic. Are you currently hiring for those projects? I think people might want to oh, know. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, our key positions are pretty much filled for the feature, but not for the documentary and other ongoing projects we have. Uh, we do need a really good editor. So any editors out there, please see me after this. I'm getting a little anxious about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fantastic. And I have to admit, I threw in that current projects thing because he told me he was going down to Charleston. It's a city that I find really, really exciting food-wise. So I wanted to hear more about it. Um, and I was going to make a Craigslist joke, and it turns out I didn't need to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, David. Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, <clears throat> I'd agree with you in, in that, uh, you know, it's, I get clients through word of mouth or just... Uh, um, meeting them anywhere, anytime. But I also, you know, um, our, our agency, our company is kind of targeting ad agencies, so we often make it a point to set up meetings in their building to meet their creative directors and, you know, bring them donuts and bagels and coffee <laughs> and ply them with the joys of life and tell them how much, how much help we can offer them uh, in, in, any step of the, uh, in any step of the creative process. Um, and in terms of crewing, uh, again, it's word of mouth, but I have had um, fair, you know, fairly recently, recently we've started to hire some people who just cold called us and yeah. bugged me until I could set a time to meet with them. And I always like to meet with people because you never know what's going to happen when you have a meeting. Um, and uh, now uh, two, of the, two of them I work with quite frequently. Uh, and it's you know, fortuitous for both of us. So I think it just... And to what you were saying about you know, meeting an editor, I think... Um, it's important to send your reel and to have a, a solid reel that you think about and that is eye-catching and will open the door for the conversation and uh, beyond the conversation of saying, hey, I'm looking for a job. Yeah. It's more just, hey, can I come talk to you and see what, where, where our paths cross or what connections we can make. Yeah. And that goes for renting equipment from uh, production houses too. You know, Go there and talk to the people who you're renting the equipment from, not just about the equipment, but about what jobs are coming through there and what, what people are looking for through them. Uh, I find I've gotten some good experience just, uh, you know, before I, before I had a company, just as a freelance person, spending more time at the uh, rental house than I should have, but it, it paid <laughs> off. Absolutely. And do you um, accept gifts of 
delicious carbohydrates in addition to you bringing them. <laughs> yes, I always accept them, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I flip them immediately. I go, then I'm like back at the agency. I'm like, hey guys, more bagels. <laughs> Anything exciting um, on the pipeline that you might want to share with the audience um, members? I mean, we are in development with two projects right now, so we're kind of wading through some legal matters and trying to see if we can get these uh, sold. And other than that, we've had a um, strangely slow start to the first quarter, which I've been hearing from a lot of it's typical. other people in this yeah. town. But this one's longer, and now it's March, and I'm like, yeah. wake up, everybody. <laughs> it's time to work. Yes. All right, fantastic. Maureen? Hi, everybody. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of what I do is long-form television. So a lot of my clients are networks that I deal with from, you know, New York, um, or production, or I work with production companies in Philly. So, um, and I've been, I was away um, outside of Philly for 20 years. I was down in Orlando working at Nick's Studios and then I was up in New York for 12 years. So coming back, I think that one thing that ties into this whole thing, and I think we've had a lot of conversations with this, is there's a lot of pockets of production people in Philly, but we don't all kind of get together like this and share resources and kind of cross-pollinate people, which I think is a great opportunity for this organization. Um, so I'm not gonna say anything different than these guys. A lot of it is word of mouth, and a lot of it is dependent on the job. You know, mm -hmm. needing an editor is a wide open thing, but are you editing a feature? Are you editing a documentary? Are you editing yeah. a TV show? Are you editing a game show? Everyone's got their specialties, and um, so even though I might know a great you know, producer or AP, it depends on what I'm actually working on. So it's very specific to the, to the actual project. And so that takes me um, many times, I'm just looking for new, for new blood, new people, and people who really know specific to the project what I need. Does that help? <laughs> A little bit. So it's very word of mouth. I will say that recently, um, I was looking for an associate producer and I kept asking around and I wasn't getting the right skills. The term associate producer can mean a million different things. Um, but I went on LinkedIn mm. and I put in Philadelphia and I put in associate producer and I actually found somebody who I never would have found and, and we met and I loved her and I worked with her and she's fantastic and I'll work with her again. Um, and of course, once we met, we knew we had similar connections but I had never heard her name before. So LinkedIn does work, and the search feature there does work. And sometimes, you know, you just take whatever, you know, you go whatever route you need to go to to, to find the people. And you know when the person's right for the job, too. Yeah. You know. Oh, fantastic. So we've got Craigslist, we've got LinkedIn. Is there any, are there any projects uh, that you want to mention? Uh, well, I'm bidding on a documentary right now that, that um, is fully staffed up, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. All right, terrific. Um, moving on to the next question. Um, the issue of women's representation um, has in Hollywood and at the Oscars um, is sort of a constant concern. It's, we get, it's getting a lot of press. Um, wondering if this issue resonates at all with any of you guys. Um, and you know, this can be anything from number, uh, the gender breakdown in your office to where if you've ever wanted to hire a woman um, but had any problems with that, um, to just personal experiences that you care to share. And again, you guys, you don't have to go down the row. Anybody want to jump in? <laughs> Everybody's all friends here. I'm interested to hear what the guys have to say about this one. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, in office. <laughs> I have uh, five full-time employees. We're all, no, no women, full-time employees, but it's certainly on my mind. And um, I was just having a conversation. We have a meeting on Wednesday, and uh, an associate producer that we work with all the time, and uh, actually a, a, a set uh, production designer, art scenic woman that we work with all the time. We're bringing, bringing them both in to be in the meeting with us. Not, not just for show, because they are an, an integral part of our team, but it's also, I, I am aware that I need to have an even playing field for the client that I'm, that I'm trying to right. get to you know, give me this job. Uh, it, it's a husband and wife pair, so I, I you know, and it's, they're interested in media with a mission, so I'm trying to prove to them, and I, I don't know, not prove, but I'm just trying to make it, make sure that I'm showing them that I'm aware that there is this, 
uh, imbalance in the situation in Philadelphia and, and up in the state or in the, in the nation, in the world, and that I'm doing, <laughs> in the universe. I'm doing something <laughs> and trying to uh, be, be a part of making it better. Right. Yeah. I, you know. Yeah. 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 Terrific. Yeah, good answer. Um, I, I, I'll echo everything Dave says, but on top of that, uh, I was sharing with Maureen earlier that um, it is a struggle to find uh, women working in specific fields. Mm -hmm. So we find a lot of women producers who are interested in working with us. Um, we have one full-time woman who works with us, uh, Colleen, who we love to death. She's wonderful, but um, the kind of where our desire to find more women working at our company, where that came from was we were working on our screenplay for our feature, and you know, we're reading it and we're like, these women characters are falling flat. And we said, why are they falling flat? Why are they falling flat? And we said, well, you know why? Because I looked around the room, I'm like, it's all dudes. <laughs> I'm like, we don't know what it's like to be a woman at all in any situation, so we need to get that input. We got input from a friend of ours um, who gave us a lot of great insight, and we allowed more people to read it, but um, we are making a more concerted effort, especially since then, to be more inclusive. Um, in addition to that, I think for me personally, I'm also looking for people of color. So if I can find a woman of color um, who is in uh, media um, or in some specific <laughs> field, please, uh, I'm open to having conversations about projects we can work on or positions you can fill. But um, that was definitely the first sign. I guess that was, uh, Mario, that was probably three years ago now that happened. Yeah. So right around then we started to forge ahead. Okay, fantastic. And you've heard the guys. Yeah. Your turn. <laughs> Um, well, I, I think that my personal story with this is, is, is a little bit different um, because I spent a lot of my years, my early years with Nickelodeon, which was a predominantly female run company, um, which we used to joke, well, it's MTV networks, they're cheap, so of course they're gonna hire women. Um, but- um, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Um, but, uh, but they also put their money where their mouth was, and when I was there, the head of programming, the head of production, the head of marketing, they were all women. So I was there for 10 years and I got to absorb and observe you know, women in leadership roles. So this topic was a little off my radar, surprisingly, until I really started thinking about it. And um, I asked around to a lot of women, like, do you feel as though there's a time in your career where you've been, you know, you know not harassed, because that's different than discrimination, but you know, maybe shut out or shut down because you're a woman. So I'm kind of curious from you guys, like what your experience is, just a show of hands, do you feel as though that's happened to you? Is that an issue in your, in your career? Yeah, okay. Um, well, I think, you know, it is gonna happen and it's continuing to happen. Maybe we're not aware of it. I, I think that I'd be interested maybe offline just talking about how to handle those situations when you're not allowed into the boys club or you can feel the resistance, you know, what do we do about it? I just tend to push through. Um, but, you know, not every woman, you know, does that. So I, I guess it's a really deep topic and it's great to talk about the, the, um, the practicalities of how we get seen. But I think until we really kind of uncover why it's happening and how it happens, um, I guess it's gonna kind of continue to happen. So that's my thought on that. Oh, that's, yeah, that's really interesting. And I kind of jumping off of that, um, supposing you did, and you've sort of answered this question, but supposing you said, okay, um, I'm going to hire um, for this particular position, and I really want to make sure that the individual is a woman. Um, how would you go about making that happen? Where would you turn? What would you do? Would you, would you use connections, networks, so on and so forth, LinkedIn? Um, so if you guys, will, again, want to just kind of maybe flesh out a little bit. Um, and what I'm doing, Kat, is, is I'm putting them up here because that's okay. going to lead to the next step in the conversation and finding out <coughs> where they're hiding and where you're looking and to see if we can make sure. links. So I put up here cold call, Craigslist, word of mouth, networking events, which you can elaborate on if you wish, and um, LinkedIn. So those are what I have so far, and I will add as you speak. Okay. Back to you. That seems to, that seems to cover it. Um, I, I just went through a, a hiring process, and it was word of mouth, yeah, uh, and it was it really a personal is. connection. And um, you know, beyond that, uh, can we add? Can we add Facebook to the list? Okay, yeah. Facebook. Could I ask you? Um, really? I'm 
I'm Diane Walsh with the Philadelphia Women in Film and Television, just so you know. <laughs> um, on word of mouth, could you elaborate? Are those friends? Are those um, other companies? Yeah, you know, it's like... So it's word of mouth uh, from people that we work with all the time or uh, constant collaborators. And then um, you know, in this case, it was a, an instance of word of mouth. Then we met and then we had a chance to work on some projects. And then a few years went by. Mm -hmm, and sure. uh, I ended up in this position of having needing someone to be a producer and um, kind of figuring out what skill set was needed and uh, Taking a, we're taking advantage of some good timing on both our ends to make this higher. Um, and yeah, for Facebook, that's specifically a, kind of like a, you know, 24 hours ahead of a shoot. Some people dropped out. <laughs> right. Like, Who knows a grip here? Yeah. Right, exactly. But yeah. then you know, then you meet somebody and then you can build there are, a relationship. There are some good Facebook pages too in the there community are, that, good that private groups um, and things like that. There's Philadelphia TV people which I happen to manage, um, that we try, and that I tried on that page to really get all types of um, production people, again, advertising, TV, film, whatever, to use that page to reach out um, for, for resources. And it happens sometimes. Um, but I, I think it really is, you know, in my estimation, it's, it's really just who do I know who uh, would know people? And right. you just call around. Um, so that, that's, that's like the main, that's the main one for sure. And I think that it's an interesting question if you say to yourself, I really want to hire a woman for this role. I don't think I've ever said that. And I don't really think that I want to ever say that. I just want to, I want the best person to win. I want the best person in my, in my um, group. And I hope that it is a woman, you know? That's fair, hopefully. Oh, okay. Right. I have conversations once a month or twice, once every other month of who who here knows a female DP right. in town? Who here knows uh, a, a female any a wide variety of of of, of crew and. <laughs> It comes up all the time, and sometimes the answer is, I don't, I don't know any. Right. right. So, like, who do you know in New York who knows someone? And then, can we get them to come down for Philly rates? Right. Right. <laughs> and the answer is generally no. Yeah. But yeah. But it's okay. It works out. So I guess what we're relying on racism, capitalism, sexism to find your employee pool that kind of add loss to that. I think. Um, wow. <laughs> I, I would say that uh, I, I don't know if I would put it in those words, but I would say that uh, I'm trying to expand my base of knowledge in both technique, skill set, and uh, collaborators in, in all directions. And it seems to me that there's so much that you can, it just seems to me like that's exactly what this event is for. Right, yes. Yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. What this is yeah. For. Um, and these two gentlemen also, were, what was interesting is when we had an event um, last, last semester, I was doing <laughs> last, um, uh, around the holidays. December, yeah. They came to the event because they stated things like, we want to know more about the women working in Philly. Right. And hearing them say that, we said, hey, that's, we want to nurture you so that you will talk to your male compatriots and spread the word, and then this event came so that we can hopefully find from you guys and here that middle road and things we can build so that we're not left with what you just said, those three things that are, you know, making us have this problem. So and that's what, again. But I am also, uh, I am a white male who runs yeah. a business in this company. That's so, I, you know, it's like, it's coming through me. Yeah, and that's the good part. And so, uh, again, that's why this conversation, I think, is hopefully going to be beneficial for you guys. And they're going to find out where we are. Right. Which uh, they clearly right. 
don't know. <laughs> so we have our part, and then they can. So I don't know if you want to go ahead. And, I don't know if you were going to add to this. Yeah, I think for me, so my conversations generally start with Colleen. Um, she's the lone woman on our staff. And so we kind of start there, like, who do you know? Who's good? Um, and she'll give us, you know, a list of names. We'll call them. And generally it boils down to someone who has a shared vision or someone who has a connection with the work that you're doing, and that's you bring on board. Um, but we're, we're finding it harder and harder because our networks are drying up a little bit in that regard. So we then go into the networks of our networks of our networks and try and get as many people as we can. So um, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I will say that, I should have said this earlier on, I am not a film guy. I just, I'm a business guy um, and my, my friends are the film people. I just kind of give direction in the business sense. So I bring a lot of different mechanisms to the system that I don't notice existing in Philadelphia. So I create portals if they don't exist. I just I find a way out of no way. Like I consider, I call myself Merlin and that's the first time I'm saying that in public. Um, but that, it's, it's, it is on film. So, but like, yeah, you, you, you kind of have to almost do that because it's very difficult. Um, and being like a black man in business in Philadelphia is difficult. Being a woman in film is difficult. Being anything anywhere these days is, is a little difficult. So we have to figure out new and inventive ways to do it. Um, but I think it will always come back to generally word of mouth and happenstance. That's also a big thing. Just you're walking like I was literally just sitting there like I don't know if we're ever gonna make this. And then a cousin of mine in Florida was like, Oh, I met this girl in Disney. She kind of did this thing. <laughs> Come to find out, she's worked on huge projects like Mad Men. Boom, and it fell right in our lap. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we depends on the client um, and it depends on the project so for us we use PIFA a lot more than the film office um, and we have great ties with PIFA um, and working with them and Jackie and now Hassan so um, we do a lot of work with them the great Philadelphia film office is a little more challenging just because the directory is so huge and you don't re like there's nothing there it's not like everyone has a reel and, and if they did how are you gonna wade through it efficiently so yeah I use more PIFA Sure. There's a website called uh, the, the, the director list uh, and this wonderful woman out in California just knew that women directors are represented. So um, these directors do, and if anyone here who's a female director, you want to look up the director list dot com. Um, and there were really well vetted directors, and it's a, like at least a thousand women directors. So I think hopefully with resources like that, right. um, you guys. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can I ask a question after that? You may even ask it right now. Okay, thank you. My name is Jody, and I'm a commercial director. Um, I do comedy mostly, so you can imagine nice. how much I work. <laughs> <laughs> so, but right now I'm working on a documentary about sexism in filmmaking and advertising uh, from a director's point of view and how that goes down. So one of the questions I ask, especially executive producers, when I'm interviewing them is, when you're looking at a reel or a body of work, you're like, hey, I like that reel. And then you find out it's a woman's work. Is there any consideration for you in that a female, especially comedy, well, any director, but comedy director, is a hard sell to an ad agent. Ad agency boys mm. don't really think right. women are funny. Right, right. You know, and, that, and these are just kind of, you know, they're not, you can dispute them, but I don't know, from interviews and people I've talked to, it is a factor. So I'm wondering, is like an executive, Well, <laughs> not for me. I don't deal with advertising, but I understand that. Um, I think you're bringing up a point that, again, was probably a sidebar conversation, but I think there's a creative glass ceiling in this industry. So it's not just about representation. It's not just about getting women hired. It's getting female leaders in this, in this, um, into the workforce. We have a lot of producers. Uh, we have a lot of production managers, but we, we don't have specialists. I think women don't necessarily go for the specialist roles like 
DP, director, creative director, and I'm wondering why that is. Do we naturally gravitate toward more support roles? I think I would argue with you greatly. Okay. I do, and I don't know if anyone else has had a lot of that on. Um, I, do think, I do think they're out there, and I think- Oh, if sure, you, definitely. You in that world a little bit, there are these cinematographers that are amazing. Oh, sure. Um, but, well, um, are they in Philly? Well, and, uh, so, but to, to follow up at that point, I'd, I'd be, for certain clients, for certain projects, I'd be more hesitant to show them a director from Philly than I would mm. a director from New York or LA, regardless of whether they're a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. Because there would be uh, automatically just like, I'm not even going to look at that person from Philly. So I think there's that. Yeah, understood. understood. Would that change with a Philly-based client? No, it would change with the level of the job. Mm -hmm. Right. Certain, certain price point, you... You're going to LA or New York for your right. for your director, Never possibly for your DP. <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, and I, it, it it affects us in in the same way that it's like you know we pitch we pitch on these higher end jobs, and it's sort of like we know we're not going to get it because the agency is going to go with the production company who's repping the director, and it's just there's not a thought process that they can keep it in town, right. and I think we're true, you know. That needs to change too. Could I ask you a question in terms of those, those ad agencies, um, in terms of the women who are decision makers at that level? Mm -hmm. I mean, what's the ratio? Uh, I don't think I've run out of 50? I, I'd say that in my experience, there's a, a, a lot of women in, in, in advertising. Yeah, yeah in, in creative directors. Creative directors uh, yeah. Uh, ex, you know, yeah, I, I definitely think so. I don't know about in sort of uh, when you get to these larger conglomerate agencies, whether they're right. up up above that, but the the levels that I deal with, certainly, I think there's plenty of plenty of women that I've met and have worked with. Okay. Um, I'd like to just now. Can I just get a, a feel of who we have in the audience? How many are directors? Could you just raise your hand so mm. that they, nice. the, the panel can also get How many wow. are producers? Creative content producers. Facebook ads. Or respond to Facebook ads. Anybody go to Facebook to look for work? Okay. okay. Um, how many of you have a website? Okay, cool. Uh, word of mouth, okay. Uh, <laughs> Greater Philadelphia Film Office. Any of you posted on there? Okay. Uh, networking events. LinkedIn. How many of you are in Okay, that's, that's, that's Good. a lot more hands on LinkedIn. Good. Uh, Pitha, are you listed on Pitha? Okay. You should be. Yeah. <laughs> now, they're going to Pitha. Okay, how many of you know what Pitha is? Okay, uh, it's a great place to, you know, for finding crew, okay, and above and below the line. But again, a place where you can list yourself. Now I want to hear, where are you listing yourself if it's not listed here? Where are you putting yourself out there to be found? Anybody have something to add? In the back. Mandy.com. Say again? Mandy. Mm -hmm. What, okay, I don't know what that is. It's 
Man. They just changed their Man. name. Man. Yeah. What is it? It's like a, a cruising <coughs> and um, like freelance website where they, you know, where they're looking for work. So this is if you're looking for work, you put yourself there. You. So, uh, they have ads. Yeah. Okay. So if you're looking for work, you post yourself. If you're, uh, if, if, and then if, and by, vice versa, you can see if there's a job there for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mandy, good. Someone else? Anyone else doing something different? Yes. No, I would just add PWIP because actually just through yeah. networking indirectly, cool. I've actually found opportunities for Okay, PWIP. And uh, we do are, are developing for PWIP uh, for members. There will be a place where you can put your reel, um, and hopefully, again, people will find out just like the PIFA that PWIF has one too. Yes, I'm a film student, so you know, I, I noticed recently if I just go on the actual websites, the Greater Film Offices, so the Film Society, and you go into the volunteer areas, they're, they're throwing in all kinds of stuff. Well, that's how I got this. You know, so they, they put things on their websites all the time with their emails and contacts with people. So going on the actual film sites and volunteer work. All right, so you just mentioned the Film Society. Any that are not here? Okay. Okay, good. Yes. Billy Cam. Billy Cam. All right. What do they have? Well, they, it's mostly networking in person. They do a little bit of cool stuff on, online. Um, but it, it's like a crew for, for television shows, like live, live television shows and then also pre recorded shows. Okay, so they list the. They list they, what they yeah, need? Yeah, they have, they have a Facebook group, uh, like call for like volunteers. Mm -hmm. So like people that are, if someone's doing a show, it's like, hey, I need volunteers for that. Um, you can also just go and just meet people that have events all the time. That's how I, 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 everything that I've been able to accomplish in Philadelphia has been because mm -hmm. of connecting to people. Okay, good. Yes? Um, I mean, I think it, every every company is smaller, but I'm meeting more and more sort of agile companies that are looking for two executive producers, uh, an editor, an animator, um, yeah, and maybe just sort of like a, what I mean. That's what we we have two. Um, what, what do we have? We have two producers, an editor, an animator, and sort of like a, an executive producer, sales. Uh, a person who talks to a lot of people and has a lot of connections and is going going out and just meeting people for coffee all the time. Yeah, and yeah. I but I think you know that's we're an example of a very small company, but that's our sort of business model to keep it small and be able to ebb and flow as opposed to a larger company in town that has mm -hmm. uh, camera operators and sound people and uh, the whole kind of crew in house all the time. Okay. Yeah, we we're structured. We have we actually have four people in business development alongside myself. So there's five just in business development because the, the one thing that we notice um, is no matter how many uh, proposals you put out there, you're probably only gonna get about 15% to say yes. So we have to just constantly curate to have work. Um, and then we have uh, four creative people who are in place full time, uh, executive producers and then two cinematographers. Um, and they're always in, but we, we have a huge network of people that work with us regularly on projects. Um, but it's pretty much business development and then creative. That's how it's settled. Um, I just hire as I need to hire for project for project. That's, that's what I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great idea to have for business development people. <laughs> oh, it's great. Oh, it's wonderful. So stressful. <laughs> so much coffee. <laughs> finding solutions for Philly. But one of the other things that came up about um, production companies is that men often tend to have a group of guys, a couple guys get together to form a company, two or three guys get together to form a company. 
<laughs> yeah. Gals tend to do it on their own. I'm going to be an independent producer. And the, the pressure is mm -hmm. different. The outreach is different. The more people you have, the more contacts you have. And so that's another interesting question that we came up with. Why, why are women tending to be a loner in the producing area and um, guys kind of joining a team? But that's another question. can't search on Vimeo. You can't search on Vimeo, but I always find it amazing. Like, that's where everyone puts right. their Right, just host their, right. yeah. I do question always if there's a way to harness <coughs> Vimeo pages somewhere right. so that yeah. it's yeah. easier mm -hmm. for them to say, hey, I'm looking for a DP, I'm looking for a comedy director. Because that's exactly what you need right now, and then find it, you know. Some sort of place for reels and places mm -hmm. to go yeah. that way. Okay, what would help you guys? Can you, and if you, you want to ruminate, ruminate. We'll ruminate. You guys can throw in two. Yeah. Uh. This is sort of a long-term thing, okay. but uh, my partner and I were talking. Uh, we were to a um, Philadelphia uh, business meeting at uh, the, the at, uh, next to the building by uh, City Hall, and one of we had this long conversation about how we can improve the just the general infrastructure of crew and technical the technical landscape in Philadelphia, much the way that Philadelphia is focusing so much on tech the tech world. How can they also start to focus on this media world as this media landscape is changing and there's so many networks and there's so many video on demand possibilities and possibilities for shorter form serial content that can be produced here and how can that how can Philadelphia put an effort into uh, maybe through Temple or, or, or shoring up the technical end of filmmaking to get students who can come into the landscape here and not have that brain drain where they go to Atlanta or LA or New York. To stay here. Yeah, so this is a long term thing, but more companies developing more content that can be produced content here. Development here. Yeah, serial content, uh, 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 branded content, uh, and, and then the, you know, the more that that's being produced here, the more that people can stay here because it's a viable solution for a job, for a lifestyle. Okay. I think is also um, starting talks of an incubator, of right. keeping yeah. young people here, giving them the resources like the Fashion Incubator does, um, to give them the resources to produce at least their first few projects right out of school, because, yeah. to get them rooted. Mm -hmm. And so we're in talks, if you want to talk with us, we'd love Yeah, I mean, there's so much, there's yeah. so much emphasis on the tech world, and I, I feel like mm -hmm. it's sort of Philly doesn't think about itself as having a possibility to produce media right. in a different way. Right. I'm now I'm giving yes. cuts a break for for student filmmakers, which is great. I mean I certainly wish it was like that when I was a student filmmaker. But I think that there should be sort of a, a you know a, a class of lower budget, you know, permitting and uh, licensure and, and and you know just help for to, to and, and finding new ways to use, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that, that again, now we've got the content maker who's going right. to go higher. Same problem, how are you going to find the people? So now let's go to that solution and see about what do you think we can do in Philly? Could we, those things that were put up here, could we find a way to use LinkedIn? Could we find a way to use something else? Somehow to be a, a resource. I, mean, I think the obvious thing would be to have website that is simple, like here is Philadelphia crew, 
see, oh, here's this person's real or not, and you can sort by however you want. At the same time, it would also have things, here are productions that are going to be starting in Philadelphia, and here's what they're looking for. You know? And with this code, and here's how you submit yourself to them. Self-posting. Because again, to organize and take care of that needs a either a group of people, yes. someone paid, or it can be self-submitting. Okay, so a website that is some way Philadelphia crew, Philadelphia, you can break it down however you want to in categories. A oh, website. Along those lines, yes. would it be, it would probably, would make an assumption that it would be most helpful for you guys if that was a pretty nicely vetted website. Yes. Not simply. And that, yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the vetted one and there's a put it up. Which, yeah. which I'm sure if I was in their position, or even if I grew up for a film myself, I don't know. No, I, I think they should, mm -hmm. they should be the same. If you want to be on the vetted website, yeah. Yes, you, want you don't want crappy jobs. You want to be taken seriously. Yeah. And most of the people in this room apparently have some kind of uh, prop. So <laughs> you don't want to end up just on the film version of Craigslist. Uh, right. That you work that way. But, you know, you, you want to say, People are going to say, all right, here are the serious people. I think we need more agency, too. Um, I mean, I'm speaking a little bit more specifically to the talent side, just because um, I was born and raised here, and I can't tell you the number of times I talk to <coughs> friends um, who know what I do and know what I'm about, and they're like, you have to be in LA. That is the only way you're going to like make moves in your career. And I, I really hesitate to do that for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, not, not just LA culture, but like, it, it would be nice to kind of stay local and, mm. and feed into that. I'm committed to that. But I get that all the time. And then I just heard um, from somebody else, we were talking about this, and she said, you're not going to find any kind of good representation in Philly anyway. So even if you want to stay here, we'll get you something in New York or LA. So again, with that same issue, right. um, and I think that works now that I'm working in the production side as well, um, I'm not seeing that there's a lot of agency. And, and what they do is effectively bridge that gap between really good talent and the folks that are looking for it. Talent being whatever, like on camera, behind the camera, and whatever capacity. Do you go to agents, or are there agents for directors, etc.? No. Um, I have not. No. Yeah. In Philly, yeah. no. no. Yeah, I think it's just because it doesn't exist. Right. right. What if an agent came to you and said, like, I've got this, mm -hmm. this high octane pool of talent, boom, 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 here you go. And they mm -hmm. bring it to you so you guys don't have to go searching for it. Or like in LA or New York, you pick up the phone and you call it. Right. And that's right. how you have that exactly. Yeah. We have five minutes left. Um, uh, I, so. <laughs> I wanted to just add one thing about the brainstorming part of this. I think that, um, as I've said before, it seems to me that this is a very kind of segmented city. The ad people know the ad people, the production people know the production people, the film people know the filmed people. But I would like to see, you know, more cross-pollination of resources so that, you know, a good commercial director might just be perfect for the project that I'm on. And I think that that's, you know, that's just really important because there's a lot of really great people in this town that I've never worked with because they're off, you know, only doing their specialty. And unfortunately, I mean, I think, or fortunately, I think that we, you know, we should give more opportunity to let people cross over and explore, especially with, you know, new media opening up and a whole new definition of what that, what that can mean. So I think it's important for people to be a little bit more um, bilingual, maybe. I just, I just have a quick question for those who are here. Uh, there's something I've been, <clears throat> been kicking around. I'm curious if there was some sort of uh, co-working space or resource center you could go to to continue education, uh, continue skills building, um, and a place where you can go and use the expensive gear that you can't afford or the expensive software you can't afford, would that be something that would be a draw for you? <laughs> Phil, oh, I, know, I know Philly can, but I'm talking about on, on no offense, but on, on a much grander scale. Because Philly Camp, from my experience, they're focused on a very particular niche. What I want to do is I'm, I'm working on a business plan. I won't share too much. I'm working on doing something on a much larger scale like that. There are people who are interested in doing that, people who want to see talent come from Philadelphia and not from New York or L.A. or Atlanta. So those are the, just something I wanted to ask. Um, we only have a couple more minutes. I'll just take, if you 
do have one other, a couple other things to just add right here. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm an arts educator and uh, I run Outreach for Children's Theater Company. Um, nice. A lot of our aspiring young artists, of course, want to be media makers as well, always trying to cooperate with the world for it, you know, bring media into the theater, etc. But, like, so I, I think I'm super concerned about this lack of specialists, you know, three young women mm -hmm. in the field. Mm -hmm. And so what are training programs that can be offered to young people? Yeah. I'm talking like right. not in college, you know, working colleges and corporate right. work is amazing. I think there's so much potential for that in Philly. But before that, before they're applying for colleges, so they know that they want to be in the specialized field, and like where do we get funding for that? Yeah. Where are these young yeah. people getting their training or interning? And being in your production company and saying, this exists for me, and I'm empowered, and I'm trained, and I want to stay in Philly and right. continue that. Like, how, where is that? And right. our young people. Mm -hmm. And, and pre-college, and I teach here at UARC. And I understand our graduating classes leave here, and you know some of them stay, many of them go, some of them come back later. But it's, it is an issue yeah. in terms of being here. Yes, yeah, so there's a program called Girl Develop It and also Tech Girls that we as media makers would be great to partner up with because they already focus on that, but they were more so focused on tech, like you yeah. mentioned earlier. And as Diane and Suzanne, you both know, my vision for my startup has getting funding to start something in media rather than tech is a lot more challenging. Mm -hmm. And finding the networks of people mm -hmm. like, like yourself, Aaron, I, I, you know, I'm thrilled to hear that you are working on that kind of thing. I yeah. uh, love We can chat. Yes. And you'll sign an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I were joking. No. <laughs> Really fast. <laughs> um, I just wanted to thank you guys for coming today. Um, obviously, this is a much bigger conversation <laughs> than one hour, um, but let's continue it. And we can continue that this offline because we started a Facebook group called PWIF, Making Female Media Makers More Visible with People That Hire. And we want to keep, um, we want to hear all of your ideas, and so we'll compile them. And in a month, we're going to try and get a roundtable together and do part two of this, because I think it's a really important conversation. Um, there's a bunch of us that actually left Philadelphia, that are part of PWIF, that left Philly, that have experience in LA and New York, and came back here. And we know some of the things that it takes to succeed, but we maybe need help with building blocks um, yeah. to help make them happen. But um, for now, thank you guys so much sure. for Thanks helping for us. us today and coming out. We appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of the film festival. This is great. Thank you. Thanks.